Ooh, you smell like fart, dude. Did you just poo on me? What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Alex, AKA Alex the Vagabond, and for the last seven years, I've been on a journey of exploration and discovery through my camera. Photography and filmmaking has allowed me to travel the world and to capture beautiful moments in time. But over those seven years, I've learned quite a few things which I feel I can now tell you to help you kind of jumpstart your photography or take it to the next level. Now, this is not gonna instantly turn you into a professional photographer, but hopefully these seven tips will help you dramatically improve your photography and get you on a course to taking your photography to the next level. If you find these tips helpful, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And please leave a comment if you have any of your own tips I'd love to read them. If you have any uh, video topics you'd like me to cover, just hop in that little comment section and drop a comment. So enough beating around the bush, let's get into it. When I first started out, I had no practical knowledge and very little experience with a camera. I remember when I bought my first DSLR camera, a Canon Rebel T3i in 2012, and that was a revolutionary experience for me. Before that, I had been doing point and shoot photography with little pocket cameras, I had a GoPro, but buying a DSLR camera that had so many knobs and so many different settings, it was a little bit intimidating at first, and it took me quite a while to figure out how to properly use that camera. So before we dive into the tips, let's take a moment to appreciate the history of photography. Photography is an art form that's only been around for about 200 years. But in that period of time, the photograph has revolutionized the world as we know it. The first photograph comes from 1826 or 1827 from a Frenchman named Joseph Niesifel Niepce. Definitely a difficult word to pronounce, mon français ce n'est pas très bien. Since Monsieur Niepce snapped that first photo, photography has become a staple of modern life. Cameras, which started off as these giant boxes, have gotten progressively smaller and more powerful until we have 4K capable cameras inside of smartphones. The first tip that I'm going to share with you might sound basic, but it's to shoot in manual mode. Shooting in manual mode is a process. It's not gonna be overnight that you see the difference. You're going to have to do a lot of experimentation, but once you understand the basic principles of manual photography, essentially setting your aperture, your ISO, and your shutter speed, and the intersection of those three elements, you will begin to have a solid foundation in the theory of photography. And I really believe that that in itself is gonna put you on the right course to improving your photos. Nowadays, most cameras have a plentitude of factory settings or modes, which you can just choose and essentially get a pretty solid image. That's not necessarily a bad thing, solely relying on those factory settings is not gonna help you improve your photography. In my opinion, switching to manual mode and essentially telling yourself, this is it, I'm gonna shoot in manual and I'm going to learn how to create a better image is what's gonna put you on the path to stepping it up with your photography. It's another rule of thumb, the higher your shutter speed is, so one over 500, for example, uh, is going to capture something quicker. So if somebody's moving, you're trying to capture a person running, you wanna shoot at a higher shutter speed. If you're trying to capture something like uh, an extended exposure, or if you want a blurred effect, then you would use a lower shutter speed. Tip number two is to follow the light. Light is the most important element of photography because a photo, when you break it down to its most basic thing, is essentially light imprinting on the sensor of a camera. There's different types of light. There's different light temperatures. The more you learn about light and the more you're aware of light, the better your photography is going to be. So a good tip for this is to plan your photos and your photography missions around the light. 
there's a thing called the golden hour. You've probably heard of it. It's essentially about an hour before sunset or the first 10 to 15 minutes after sunrise. And generally speaking, the golden hour, whether that's in the morning or in the evening, uh, is gonna have better light. So if you're trying to improve your photography, Try to avoid shooting in the middle of the day. 12 noon is, is the worst time to do any photography. If you have to shoot in the middle of the day, try to look for places where the light is diffused or where you have cool contrast between light and shadow. All of the ways that you can shoot with the light or against it is gonna give your photography a different feel and it's gonna take your photos to the next level. Tip number three, which is think about your framing. I know that that sounds basic, but I think that framing is one of the most important aspects of photography that constantly gets overlooked. People just pull their camera out, snap a photo, and move along on their on their way, and then they you know take a look at the photo later and they're like, why does this not work? Why does this not feel right? And it's because there's no forethought into framing. A general rule of thumb with framing is just to kind of simplify your framing, simplify the image. Less is more. A lot of people try to capture these big, wide, sweeping shots and there's a ton of action going on. There's a lot of things in the photo, but it makes it distracting and it makes it more difficult for your viewer to focus on the subject of the photo. So. When you're thinking about framing, think about what you can remove from the image versus what you can put into it. While we're on the subject of framing, chances are you've probably heard of the rule of thirds. What is that? The rule states that an image should be divided by two equally spaced vertical lines and two equally spaced horizontal lines, creating nine different segments or quadrants of an image that are all equal. Compositionally, you'd want to try to take the subject and line that up with one of the vertical lines and the horizon with one of the two horizontal lines. This is gonna help you create tension and interest in a image that would be a little bit more boring if you just lined everything up in the center and left it at that. Something else to think about uh, is framing within the shot. Framing. I like to sometimes try to find frames within the frame of the image. Finding something that can frame the subject within your photo. A frame within a frame, if you will. Tip four, equipment. While it is possible to take incredible images with smartphones nowadays, I'm still a big believer in the power of lenses to create more compelling photos. There's something about the way that light refracts off of the glass and onto the sensor of your camera that creates something that's just impossible to capture with a smartphone. While new phones have portrait mode that adds depth of field by blurring the background of the image, it's not really comparable to the effect of good old fashioned glass. So if you want to improve your photography, I highly suggest that you invest in good lenses. Now, this is definitely something that's subjective. I think that uh, depending on what you're doing and what your end goal is with your photography, uh, different lenses might be more useful or less useful for you personally. Um, I would suggest that if you're just getting into it and you don't have a big budget to uh, spend on lenses and on glass, because let's be honest, Good lenses nowadays are pretty damn expensive. Uh, I would suggest that you get just a good solid zoom lens, something that can do a bit of everything. I'm shooting 100% on Sony Alpha cameras. I have been for the last four to five years. I really love what Sony's doing with the Alpha series and the new one. This video is shot on the Sony A7R 3 which I absolutely love, both as a photography and as a videography camera. Um, I primarily shoot with the G Master series, so the 24 to 70 G Master lens. It's got a aperture of 2.8. It's a really, really solid lens. It's sharp, it's crisp, it's clean. The 16 to 35 millimeter zoom lens, that's the wide angle lens, which also has the aperture of 2.8, is a great call if you're trying to do landscape photography. This video right now, I'm shooting on the 85 millimeter G Master lens. The f-stop is 1.4. This is primarily a 
portrait lens for photography and some of my favorite images I've ever captured have been with this lens. The depth of field on the G Master 85 in my opinion is unsurpassed. It's one of my favorite photography lenses but it's a fixed prime lens. Prime lenses generally have a better image quality um, because they're not compromising trying to do everything like a zoom lens does but they're less flexible. So you're not gonna want to go outside and shoot landscapes with this 85 millimeter portrait lens. You just kind of have to sit down and ask yourself, what am I trying to do with my photography? What are my most pressing needs? And uh, which lens is best for me? I'll link my favorite lenses down there in the description of the video. And let me know in the comment section if you'd like for me to do some more lens comparison videos. I already have one in the pipeline right now, but if you're interested, I'm definitely open to making more to help you guys find out what the best lenses are for your needs on the market right now. Tip five, take your time. Improving your photography is not going to happen overnight. This is a process, and like any process, it's gonna require patience, dedication, and practice. There's a rule of thumb in photography that for every 100 images you take, you'll end up with one good image. With that in mind, it's very important to take lots of photos and realize that your journey as a photographer is not gonna be quick. It's not like, oh, I bought a good camera and here we go, click, boom, Instagram famous and I never have to work or learn anything new again. I think it's really important to always remain a student. Try to learn new photography techniques. I'm still learning, but I think that if you dedicate yourself to putting in the time, you're going to get better at photography, just like anything else in life. If you put the time in, you're gonna improve. It's also important to just bring your camera with you every day. Get a good backpack that allows you to put your computer and all the stuff that you need for work in that backpack, but also allows you to safely store your camera because having your camera on you means you're going to take more photos. And when you take more photos, inevitably, you're going to improve. So it's as simple as just bringing your camera with you and remembering to use it. Another good technique is just to switch up your photography. You may be a portrait photographer. Why don't you go out during the day and experiment with shooting architecture or landscapes or uh, HDR or extended exposure shots. Essentially, put the time in to improve on the things that you're not good at while continuing to improve on the thing that you are good at. And don't forget about the 10,000 hour rule. That means that it's gonna take you at least 10,000 hours to master any given subject. Tip six is to shoot in RAW. Chances are that the camera that you own has the ability to shoot in both RAW or JPEG. Some cameras even offer the ability to shoot both in RAW and in JPEG. You may be asking yourself, what's the difference between RAW and JPEG? And to boil it down to its most essential elements, a RAW photo uses the full power of your camera and the full power of your sensor and has much more information stored in that file whereas a JPEG is a compressed version of that. It essentially takes all of that information and it compresses it down. Uh, it's easier to share, it's easier to upload, and the file sizes are much smaller, but you do lose some image quality and you definitely lose the ability to manipulate the image or edit the image. So I highly recommend that you start shooting in RAW as soon as possible if you haven't already. If you're already shooting in RAW, you're gonna realize that yes, the file sizes are larger, but you also are able to do so much more with that image, especially once you bring it into Lightroom or Photoshop or other photo editing applications to, uh, to play around with it and to edit your photo. So switch to RAW, don't go back to JPEG, and you will improve your photography drastically. Which brings me to tip number seven, which is invest in a density filter. I prefer a variable density filter, which allows you to adjust the amount of light that's coming into the camera, into the lens, and eventually onto the sensor. So you can shoot in the middle of the day, you can still have that solid depth of field by opening up your aperture to the highest setting, and if you didn't have that, 
that variable density filter, there would be no way for you to capture that without totally overexposing the image. Buy a variable density filter. I'll link the ones that I like down in the description, um, and I'll have a couple at different price points because there are quite a few of them out there on the market. Long story short, using a variable density filter is gonna allow you to take your photography to the next level and to start to experiment with new techniques and different styles of taking photos. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, there you have it. Those are my seven tips for dramatically improving your photography. I hope that some of those tips you found helpful uh, and I'm very excited to hear from you down in the comment section. If you haven't already, make sure that you're subscribed with notifications enabled. There's gonna be a lot more videos coming out on this channel this year. I'm really excited to start publishing on here more often and to share some of the things that I've learned over the last seven years of taking photos and making videos around the world. So, as always, remember, train harder, fail smarter, and never give up. See you guys next week. Peace.